Shit. Oh, shit. What is going on, chat? Hello. Hi. Wait, where's my camera? Hi. <laughs> I keep moving it. Hello, chat. Welcome back to Therapy Thursday. If you're new here or returning, it doesn't matter. Uh, the whole point of this stream is to basically talk about mental health. And um, basically, this is a place where I bring in my sister, Asteria. We'll bring her in in a moment, who is a professional therapist. And we encourage anybody who's joining the stream, if you have any questions about mental health or just want to discuss anything that's kind of going through your head, um, just drop in chat if you feel comfortable with everybody hearing it. This is going out live to the entire world, everywhere. If you have no problem with that, then go ahead, drop it in chat. And basically you can get a little bit of insight on what you might be feeling or anything that you have questions on from a professional, a high end professional. This, this stuff will normally cost you like $250 an hour. So it's free. Remember that we're, we're doing this because, you know, uh, we had the idea. We just want to help people out, especially in today's day and age with how the world is and how people are basically it seems to me anyway that mentally just crumbling so we're here to do our part for about two hours so yeah join in with us now let's see if we can bring her in actually i'm gonna switch this over to that real quick oh by the way we play a game called fall guys as you can see um at least at the beginning until we start getting into some more conversation and then we'll drop it back out into that intermission looking thing. I got to change that camera, by the way. It needs to stop saying intermission. I'll fix that later. You know, what, once this starts growing more, we'll fix it. Now, let's see. Whoopsie duties. Oh, man. I hate how this uh, window really likes to not be the size that I need it to be so I can unmute myself. Hello? Hysteria. Hello? She's in here, Chad. Don't worry about it. I see her. She's just not saying I'm anything. I'm here. Yet. There she Sorry. is. Sorry. Right when you started, um, Artemis was like, oh, yeah, like, I'm going to play. And then right when I started, like, never mind, I'm not. And I'm like, okay, never mind. Okay. Sounds he good. Said he'll, he said he'll be here in a bit. He has to do a call about some nerdy shit. All righty. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll, I don't mind if he plays, but yeah. The whole point, I mean, we, there might be, you know, once the conversation starts getting going, then obviously we'll probably stop playing. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of like last week. Okay. Uh, so Hi, everybody, everyone. Asteria, hello. Uh, go ahead and do your normal uh, qualifications and disclaimers. Have at it. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Asteria. I am an associate manager family theory therapist that works under the state of California. Um, um, I uh, are as an associate manager family therapist. That means that I have the uh, qualifications to, and, or and especially as an associate manager family therapist, I have the qualifications to administer administrate support to uh individuals couples families um i work instead of uh i work on the micro level whereas social workers work on the macro level meaning i work on the deep stuff inside of you that you probably are commonly ignoring um kind of like your spleen just kind of like your spleen maybe your gallbladder if you remember that old thing um and if you still have it don't brag about that. It says me too. Anyway, long story short, um, what the whole reason why I do this um, with Kilted is one because I have an excuse to hang out with Kilted, but two, um, I think that resources, especially to mental health, can be expensive and can be inaccessible. So I like to use this platform uh, to give back to the community um and so if you have general questions regarding psychology to the best of my ability i will support if you have questions related to mental health i can support i do not do so disclaimer and i will not emphasize this enough i do not do diagnoses here if you have suspicions of a diagnosis please go to a professional um and i also 
will not diagnose your family members either. I know it's really easy to always label people as narcissistic, but not everyone's narcissistic just because you don't like them. Um, they can just be an asshole. They can just be an asshole. Thank you. They can just be an asshole. Um, doesn't mean that they're automatically narcissistic. So please feel free to put your questions in the chat. Kilted will be the one to kind of administer that um, and bring them to attention and may even branch off with his own questions um, following that. And uh, we're just here to have fun. So, um, and if you don't like what I have to say to you, sucks. Just leave. But don't, because I'd rather you stay, because we're not gonna we're not gonna endorse avoidance. So come hang out, enjoy your time, um, keep it chill, um, and it, and most importantly, because as as of last week or what happened last week, um, if you are under the age of eighteen, <laughs> um, I have to be extra careful of answering your questions because you anyone under the age of eighteen. Anyone that's over the age of 18 and is identified as a dependent under the state law and anyone over the age of 65 are protected classes. So I have to be a little bit more careful with those classes. So please be advised. Thank you. All righty. Um, and also, uh, I might have to repeat this later, but basically if we start getting a lot of stuff in chat, I mean, we'll try to get to it in the order it comes in. If we can't get to it, my apologies, but we'll do our best. And if we, you know, I th I'm, I'm thinking, you know, it might not happen now because we're still kind of new at this. But once it, if this kind of catches on and gets more popular and people keep coming in, uh, we're going to have to like maybe start putting a time limit on stuff. And then I'm going to, yeah, yeah I'm going to try to, I'm going to encourage people to join the Discord and I will maybe start a like certain discussion uh, area in the server. So if anybody has questions while we're not here, at least we can kind oh, yeah. of like line them up, I guess. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's a great idea because again, we'll try to get to all of the questions that we can. If we don't get to it this week, we'll get to it next week. Um, we do this every Thursday at six thirty Pacific Standard Time. Um, six thirty and... p.m. Make sure they let people know it's the oh, yeah. afternoon. This isn't early oh. morning over here. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. So, excuse me. Uh, six thirty p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and I think that, I think that should cover it. Um, so I think that's a great idea. So then people could have a questions like outside of that time and then we can kind of come back to it or create some themes of the day. Mm hmm. Sounds that's a good. good idea. All right. Okay. Well, let's get into the game while we kind of get everything rolling. Um, let's see. First off, how are you? Cause let's start off like oh. that. Thanks uh, for asking. Um, today was absolutely chaotic at work. Um, my boss quit. Oh no! Like, uh, how high up of a boss? Mm, like, my direct uh, manager quit. Um, also, my also is my supervisor quit today. Uh, they put in their two weeks. Um, and then. Um, as a result of that, my CEO and my COO are going to be stepping into that role while they fill it. But I have some great news. Um, I got the official bit, um, uh, I got approved and was offered a position at my company's sister location, which is a private practice. So I got, I was kind of like up in the air for a second and have like a super solid answer but my ceo came to me and said you officially are approved once they get kind of a uh, the new people that are going to be taking over my role uh at my current position is nice and you know taken care of and covered i get to move on over nice is it closer to home no but <laughs> no <laughs> no but uh more opportunities to be able to do virtual sessions um, so I could just be at home. Um, additionally, my pay is going to go significantly higher. I'm jealous. Um, so I'm going to start getting to charge double my current rate. 
Oh um, man, you hear that, Chad? Look, she's gonna be more expensive probably in a month. So all this free <laughs> therapy essentially for you, take advantage of it. Yeah. This is gonna go like I don't know what four hundred dollars an hour. I don't know what people charge. Okay. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah, and um, it's free. Well, I mean, it depends, and it's free. So please take advantage of this. This is the extent to which I can support in the public sector, and so I really hope that y'all take advantage of it. I really do. I would oh. love to support you because my number one goal has actually. I know a lot of people don't believe this. Um, but my personal goal as in the field was never about money. Like my, I've always ever just wanted to support people and help people. Um, and, uh, I love what I do for a living. So, so, so you sound like most doctors, uh, medical doctors, at least like, uh, my ex, you know, it's, okay. it's, she really wanted to. Yeah, that was the whole reason she became a doctor. She wanted to help people. And even, you know, my neighbor, uh, she wanted to help people. But unfortunately, kind of when you, I mean, it's different in your field, but, you know, mm -hmm. they get in there and it's like, this is not what I signed up for. I wanted to help people. Now it's just all insurance claims and people just fighting with you the whole time. And I can see why it can get stressful and depressing and, you know, just too much to handle. Mm, a great point. I have to deal with insurance myself. It's really disheartening because there's some folks that could do really, really well. And, um, but the only thing that's really preventing them from like, you know, reaching their full potential is how much insurance is willing to cover. So, mm -hmm. and what I have to specifically do is I have to make reviews to send to insurance to fight for them to give clients additional coverage. And that's exhausting. So, but do yeah. I do it? Yeah. Yeah. And insurance is a pain in the ass because I, I even have to, I got to figure out how to like contact my direct doctor and see if there's a way they can get me in to see my own therapist or uh, what's the other one? The one that can help me with the ADHD, uh, psycho, what the, psychiatrist? Psych psychiatrist. Yeah, or psychologist. Or psychologist. All these big words. Okay, uh, but if you but if you see a pediatrician, then we're concerned. Aren't those the ones that deal with babies? <laughs> Kids, yeah. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> They're all babies, all of them. Yeah, people can be babies. <laughs> gotcha. So, is there anything Boys. that you need to get off your chest, therapy-wise? Um. So here is my soapbox for this week. Um, First if place. You're in the if you're in the field in any capacity, and I mean, whatever is your appropriate field, get your shit together. Um, <laughs> I know that was pretty direct what I just said, but I'll say it again. <laughs> get your shit together. I have to, one of the things that I did not, and no one warned me, or I did not know, and no one warned me about when before I was getting my degree, was how there's some folks that, um, very much hold their trauma on their sleeve in the field. What do you mean and by that? Meaning like they are not checking themselves and taking care of their own traumas and their own pain and it's impacting their ability to give quality treatment to clients that are seeking that support, right? So kind of like and how you mentioned last week that basically if you're going to find a therapist, find a therapist who has a therapist. Mm-hmm. Please. So, um, it can be really damaging. It can be downright difficult because then, um, there, are, but I want to also say if you're somebody that's experienced somebody like that, please don't think that all clinicians or people in the field are like that. Like, don't let that, like, ruin uh the opportunity to get support i i know it's exhausting but i encourage you to still give it a try um and if you're somebody that's not dealing with their shit that's in the field i i'm exhausted i'm downright exhausted because you're making a conscious decision and i gotta clean it up every day so fyi before you buy gotcha that is my soapbox Otherwise, I'm not that bad. Uh, Fourth of July was a good time. 
Um, I know you spent time with the eldest. How'd that go? It was good. Like I said, he, like, especially with, like, Artemis around, he, like, does pretty darn well. Um, Having the airbag and, in that car. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, it was, it was nice. We hung out with the eldest, the, and the eldest's partner's, like, siblings. That was fine. Partners. Um, okay, so the foot and the toes. <laughs> Is that how I want to put it? <laughs> yeah, the foot and the toes. Okay. Um, and oh my goodness, uh, I thought one was was short, the other ones are shorter. Oh my god, what the? Well, no. we qualified. That's all that matters to me. Um, let's see. It was fine. Um, let's see, and, and, yeah, I think that should be pretty much it. I don't have a topic in mind this week. Um, if, well, so if you have a topic, I'd like to hear it, and also, how are you? I got a whole list of my crap that I've been dealing with the last few days, um, but I just want to remind people again, anybody who's passing through, this is Therapy Thursday. If you have any mental health questions, feel free to drop them in chat. And my sister here, Asteria, who's joining me, who is a professional therapist, will answer those questions to the uh, like her fullest expertise or whatever. Words are hard. Ability. Ability. Mm -hmm. There we go. Big word. <laughs> Brett Favre. Brett Favre. Um, oh, my God. The eldest and I... We're just going around and being like Bob Dole. Bob, Bob Dole. Because they had, because the fair had Dole Whip, and they're like Bob Bob Dole likes your Dole Whip. Bob Dole. <laughs> oh, oh, I got knocked out the side. I'm dead. Uh, but okay, so you you guys ended up going to the fair. Yeah, we went to the fair. Ah, yeah, I wasn't going to that madhouse. It was nice. It it wasn't that busy at all, actually. That is surprising. Um, yeah, it was pretty good actually. I had a silly little time. With some silly oh god. Looks like we are out. With some silly little folks. Um yeah. And uh we didn't pay for the fireworks show because I'm not dumb. And I don't um, know who the hell pays for that. The only fireworks show you should pay for is if it's at like a music festival, because you're there for a music festival. That's why I go to EDC, yeah. great fireworks. Um mm -hmm. Or if you're basically getting a pallet of them delivered to your house so you can set the state of California on fire question do mm -hmm. they not have firework stands in this county no uh the county up north that i you know where, where the the father used to live or does i don't know where he's at mm -hmm. um I don't know. they they are like one of the only ones that does i feel that and i don't even know if they still do it that was a culture shock for me because they still do and i grew up with Firework stands like my whole life. So when I was like, "Oh, let's go hit up a firework stand," they're like, "What?" And I'm like, "What?" It was very shocking to me. Yeah, we don't have that. Um, let's see. Uh, just to finish up that thought with the fireworks, uh, my neighbor. I I can't. I don't know if I can blame her specifically because it could have been somebody else. But wait, which one? Uh, the nurse. Mm hmm. Okay, so like basically the the one I talked to. Oh, I got a new neighbor, mm -hmm. by the way, and uh, he dropped off a letter to my house yesterday because they're going to have the water shut off tomorrow because he bought the place mm -hmm. where the uh, schizo was living. Oh, yeah. And so he bought that place and he was like, oh, I got to put a new water heater. So he's like turning. He just let me know that the water's going to be shut off tomorrow. Okay. And I was like, OK, cool. And then I noticed the shirt he is wearing. It's a uh, paintball shirt. I noticed I was like, oh, I know that team. I was like, dude, nice shirt. And he's like. He's like, you, you know what this is? I was like, hell yeah, man. I played paintball for a long time. He's like, dude, I still go. I was like, man. He's like, you want to join us? I was like, I still got equipment. I just need to get new air tanks and maybe a new mask. He's like, I got you covered. I got, I got extra freaking markers and everything you can use. So we'll see how that goes. He seems like a cool guy. So that's Male good. Male friendship is so genuine sometimes. <sighs> Wait, what is male? You say male, male friendship? Yeah, male friendship. Oh, yeah. Well, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I'm not here to say anything more about it. just yeah. Yeah. It just is sometimes. It's uh, <laughs> really neat. Okay, but back to the whole firework thing. Uh so the nurse, she told me she did something, but I don't know if 
the result of it from was what she did because I, I need to get more specifics so i parked mm -hmm. my uh, so i parked the car out on the street and she told me like i was sitting here playing video games because i stayed home by myself the whole time which is a freaking major bummer i was not happy for i have not been happy for the last week i've been in a very dark spot um mm -hmm. but i heard this like bang crackle and i was like what the heck that sounded wrong whatever that was and it sounded close <laughs> and and I see her walking by once because I can see the fireworks in this town, you know, kind of from my patio. It, like there's some trees in the way, but you can see enough of it. Um, right. So she's standing out there kind of watching too. And I, she's like, oh, yeah, I set one off over there. I had one like lying around for probably like 10 years. And it, I, it launched, but it just blew up on the ground. So I think I might have put it on the ground upside down. I was like, I don't doubt that because I don't want to be mean, but she does drink a lot in a unhealthy kind of way um and so i went out there the next day and i was getting in my car and i see these marks on my car and it looks like the the stars you know because it, it was supposed to be one that launched into the air and it didn't mm -hmm. so you know that there's the explosion then you get all the colors so i think one of the stars like the color stars a few of them hit my car and i just oh, had these no. marks plastered all over it and i was like oh god and i think it actually one of them might have melted the laminate on my window a little bit oh my god yeah, so i gotta talk to her about that it's not enough to like do anything i just want to know if that's what happened so yeah that's uh, insane yeah okay and so let's go back into the mental health stuff okay. um i have a list because i've been trying to write down what the hell has been bothering me no that's good uh, just because i wanted to bring it up here okay Okay, so this has been this is you know my reoccurring theme. Um, basically, this is you know just having a problem with meeting people and having friends mm -hmm. or relationships and just things I'm feeling while I'm out and about. And one of the big ones I'm having a problem with. There's a few things I'm going to branch off here is stuff that's happening at the gym. Mm -hmm. um, first off, I think I explained last week. My workout buddy is out for and indefinite amount of time i just don't have a time for him because his wife gave birth with twins so he has to you know be there and like support her for you know like a few weeks i'm sure, you know twins mm -hmm. it's not easy one kid's you know so now he's up to three three daughters this poor poor guy and he's 28 oh three daughters at 28 yep. i can't i still can't even like I'm 20, or I'm about to be 20, and I still can't freaking put two and two together on all that. Like, that's just, that sounds like way too much. I'm in the middle of my 30s, and I'm like, I don't even know how people have dogs. <laughs> that's incredible to me. <laughs> that's fair. Um, so, let's see. Hold on. Let me kind of get to an area where I can look down at my notes. Jumping is not a good area to look at my notes. Not with that attitude. No, I mean, that's just common sense. Okay, so I've noticed myself doing this. You can go ahead and break down the trauma here. Uh, you know, that's, that's what I'm that's, literally my background is. That's the whole stream. Um, I've noticed when I'm at the gym, you know, there are attractive women there. Obviously, it's a gym. Not many when I go in the morning, but there's they're there. And I every time like a new girl comes up and I go, wow, she's really attractive. I sit there and go, okay, maybe this is someone I can talk to at some point, especially if they stick around and you can make small talk and then see what happens. And my first go-to with that is, first off, look at their hand. Is there a wedding ring on it? And let's say 99% of the time, yes. So I don't even bother. And a lot of times um, there, there's like a good group of these girls that come in with their partner and they work out together which is good and but as soon as i see that especially if they're attractive because i already have this problem with not wanting to look at women at the gym especially if they're taken or something like that or hey, even if they're not it doesn't matter i don't want to look at them because i feel like a freaking creeper so i okay. just stare at the floor but, you know, monkey brain, if I'm not paying attention, I'm just kind of thinking about the workout or listening to a song or whatever. I mean, you know, my eyes are just going to go wherever, like, subconsciously. Monkey brain. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I've been catching myself and I've been having this thought. Uh, this is not, this has been going on for a long time. This has been going on for years. I'm just trying to break down why it's happening. So if I see one of those girls that's with their guy and I know that they're both there at the same time, I get really uncomfortable with even like, so if let's say I'm working out on something and the girl is somewhere to my right, it can be anywhere on that side of the gym. It's a big place. I do my best, even if I'm looking at the clock to count how many seconds, because, you know, I try to rest for like 30 seconds between my sets. So even when I go to look at the clock to see like how much time I have left before I have to go again. Yeah. If they're on that side of the gym where the clock is, I get really uncomfortable because I know that there are guys there and, and I like I just like I don't want to look over there because what if this guy sees me looking in that direction and or and I'm subconsciously doing monkey brain looking around. I don't want to mm -hmm. get in a fucking fight. And it's like I'm not saying these are guys that are going to do that by any means because I don't know them. But my brain automatically goes to don't even look that direction because you'll probably piss somebody off. And I don't know why my brain does this. I feel so uncomfortable when I see an attractive woman over near to the clock. I'm like, fuck, I, I got to look at that thing, but she's over there. And yeah. I, I don't know why. Uh, monkey brain. <laughs> um, limbic system, mainly. Um, I just heard that word today. I was about to ask you about it. The limbic system. Like, as much as every time people say, like, monkey brain, blah, 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 reptilian mind everything like that it's the it's the evol like i hate it because people are like oh monkey brain bad i'm like but you believe in evolution but dismiss monkey brain what oh wait, i uh, don't dismiss monkey brain i just don't like the fact that it still has power over me well the thing is is that it will um and it continue to uh I'll but fight it's it. But you need to, yeah, I, I, exactly. Is that in your skill development, you start to realize that you have more power in challenging your reactions, um, because the the way signals are sent to the brain, they go through the section, aka the limbic system, that reacts before it gets to the place in our brain, like our prefrontal cortex, that responds. And so monkey brain first, rational thought later. Right. So the thing is that many times people have this. Okay. So if this applies to you, chat, um, me too, because this applies to everybody. So you're not unique. And let's just kind of put that facade to the side. And I just need you to hear me out. So the thing is, is that we as humans are built to survive. Now, when I say survive, it does not always mean that you will still have friends or that you will, uh, things will work out to the best of what you want things to be. No, no, no. Your body wants to survive, right? Mm -hmm. And so it, it has evolved on the element of survival. So everything outside of survival, like newer emotions, different ways that we label feelings, uh, you know, societal rules, um, social rules, social climate, so, you know, all these things, these are not a part of what is already embedded in us, right? Right. Uh, and it's something, and because it's about emotions, it is so subjective that it's going to look differently for everybody, right? In addition to that, everybody's emotions look differently. Uh, not one person or not two people's anger is going to look the same, right? So anyway, um, I say this because our limbic system um, is the same place that holds memories, emotions, uh, and trauma. Um, and so I say this because even though people are like, oh, I know so much about myself, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't have to question it. I know what, no, no. <laughs> and the sooner you accept it, the more you'll find peace. As much as people are like, I have complete control over myself. No, you don't. 
and it's okay. Um, me too. The thing is, is that we are reactive. We are set up to react. We are set up to take very little information and go as far as possible with it, if it means, or to any extent, excuse me, in order to survive. So, what do we do to challenge that and change that? We need to use skills. This is why therapy isn't just going and talking about your issues. It's about getting skills to develop foundations of empowerment that in that support you from not feeling stuck to be a reactive human because your reactions are or or the reactions you don't like or uncomfortable more specifically are the ones that are that you identify identify as issues Mm -hmm. now many many people think it's they're like oh but that's just me i it's just easier to blame myself right right um it's actually not um it is it is not easier in the sense that the issue gets solved um in itself what you're doing is you're putting a band-aid on and the reason why you put that band-aid on is subjective to each individual sometimes avoidance sometimes discomfort whatever the reason is right but it doesn't actually solve anything because if it actually solves something, it won't keep repeating in your life again and again and again and again and again. Right. It didn't solve anything. Right. Um, it just put a band-aid. Right. And that's what it is. As much as people are like, oh, but it is my fault. I'm like, commonly, you mentalize it's your fault because the idea of sitting with it longer than what you're comfortable with sounds like more hell then um or in addition or sorry excuse me the sitting with it and getting to know it sounds more like hell than just saying it's my fault and just walking away from it and rather than like sitting with it and uh dissecting it so it actually doesn't solve the problem well that i mean that's probably why therapy is good because people just don't know how to dissect it yes so if you are somebody that has the mentality that you just go to therapy to talk, you are wrong. And what actually happens is what uh, you start to learn is that there is a life that you can have outside of your reactive brain, your limbic system, your reptilian brain, your monkey brain, whatever you want to call it. Monkey. Monkey. Right? So now is it easy no that's the issue for most folks is that it actually takes a lot of active participation and skills to challenge this and so you so unless you you're ready to recognize that and challenge that things may just continue to be the same and they will keep repeating over and over until something changes so, good luck. Three. Yeah, all right. Well, we're going to put a pause on that chat because this is that one game that we need mental. <laughs> okay. Three, I need three dimensional focus. awareness here. Um, is it this way? It. Oh, sorry. And no, uh, with, this, get the top. with this whole one, game. Two, three. I I finally started working on that uh, on that uh, then, Moonlander, that Lego Moonlander, one right next to you, right there. What? Oh, oh we're missing something. Oh, hold on, it's that bottom row. No oh, wait, what? what we... Oh, it's oh, that I got little it. smidge right there. I got it. I got it. Oh, damn it. There we go. Okay. But. Just with this game, it, it kind of reminds me or makes me think like, you know, my ability to see things in different dimensions, I guess, makes me good at certain things, obviously. Oh, God, well, I'm not doing good today. Uh, and then four and then except for that square. Okay. Um, and then I, I'm building the 
the Moonlander that I got for Christmas. And I feel like I'm burning through it really fast. Yeah. Because I'm just like, oh, this was here. And I can just throw it together. Because I see a lot of people just struggle with that stuff. Like, I don't know where this part Maybe is. Maybe that's how your brain does well. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, so do, I think we polished that off, that section. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so to go... So to go back to your whole point when it comes to like how you react and you're like, you don't know why many people feel like they're like, oh, I should know better. I should do better and all these things. It's all like you actually should give yourself grace in the time that your brain is just being a brain and your body's reacting and just try to do your best to use skills uh, to challenge it in the future as quickly as you can. And as soon as you start doing that and practicing that, the time to which your brain will learn to respond rather than react will become small or like that space in between becomes smaller and smaller. Gotcha. Um, af after this, um, this round right now, I'll, I want to share a quote about all this because there's something about being a therapist and having a lot of quotes about stuff gotcha. and anecdotes and, and no. knowledge. This is the final, by the way. No, no, oh I'm getting gosh, bullied. Really? I'm, Fucking A. I, why do I ever go up the left side? That never works. We lost. Well, it's okay. That's ah! over. This game fucking cheats. Hmm? Or it's just the game. And it happens it sometimes. Huh? Alright, let me change the camera around so we can go through this one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think like on the future ones, we're gonna have to like not play this. We're gonna have to set up like a background, get some like calming fucking bird noises or something. Because sometimes even when I'm playing this, I'm like, this is kind of distracting for me. Um, Artemis wants to know if he can join now. Uh, he can. If you want to invite him, go for it. I mean, you'd have to invite him to the game. He's literally just playing the game. He's not gonna be chatting. Oh, I didn't know if you had the ability to invite. I don't think I do, but I will check. I just have to get all my stuff. Oh, I don't I even have him as a friend, so. I have to see this quote real quick. I don't have him um, as a friend, so you're going to have to figure it out. <laughs> all right, go ahead with the quote. Uh, real quick, it is. Um. It says, our, the quote is, human freedom involves our capacity to pause between the stimulus and response, and in that pause, to choose the one response to which we wish to throw our weight. The capacity to create ourselves based upon this freedom, freedom is inseparable from consciousness or self-awareness. That is the outline of everything I believe in. It is literally like the quote uh, that defines all of my values. Do you want me to repeat it? Yeah, sure, go for it. Okay, so this is again for you, chap. Human freedom involves our capacity to pause between the stimulus and and response and in that pause to choose the one response toward which we wish to throw our weight the capacity to create ourselves based upon this freedom is inseparable from consciousness or self-awareness Okay. What? Well, first of all, I'm going to pause for a second and check. Um, you have to... Hold on real quick. Press right bumper. I have my quote-unquote root beer. Oh, yeah. Um, what is your name on here? Uh, In-game, 
It's, yeah. Uh, same as the stream. Kilted underscore pork. It's going to be kilted underscore pork. Oh, wow. No, uh, I don't think capitalization matters. That's if he's bringing it through uh, Epic. Um, yeah, it's going to be through Epic. Uh, yeah. So basically just that small pause is basically what makes us different from monkeys. No. Yes, it literally is the thing that separates us from monkey. So... Uh, you've been sent to a friend request. Oh, wait. I think I see it. Mr. Mango? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I, I was like, questioning it, but yeah. Okay, and then you can go from there and get him. Right? <sighs> All right. Um, let's see. Where did I want to go from there? Tell him to dick around a bit while I kind of get my thoughts together. Um, put your little outfit together and so forth so that we can finish up the slot and then join a game. Okay, cool. Go ahead. Okay, so basically back down to my list of what's been bothering me for the last week. Um, there's, a lot of it's going back to the gym because that's where things are happening. They popping uh, off at the gym? Yeah. So there's this girl that started working the front desk. She was there last summer. Mm -hmm. And I tried talking to her less. I was like, oh, you know, she's cute. And like, she runs the front desk. So I just started chatting it up with her. And she's like, oh, well, I'm leaving town, you know, for school uh, mm -hmm. in Arizona. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, well, I guess I'm not going to bother talking to you because <laughs> you're not going right. to be here. And then now she's back. And I was like, oh, she's back. Holy shit. I can start talking to her again. And I did. And then, uh, uh, you know, Whenever I get, uh, I see these opportunities, I kind of get a little bit excited. I'm like, good, I can finally talk to somebody. Right. And so I go to talk to her. I'm like, oh, you're back from school. How was this? Blah, blah. She's like, oh, good. But I was like, I'm surprised you're working here again. She's like, yeah, it was an easy hire and they need people. And, you know, it's good for now. Uh, but I'm not going to be here long. I was like, oh, what was going on? She's like, I'm moving to Colorado. And it's just like, fuck, man. With all this shit that keeps going on, I, I mean, I got some more stuff to add this, another situation. But when I was writing this down, I, I feel like there's just, when it comes to like trying to just meet people or dating, there's no options. I feel like, the, like personally, from my eyes, there are no options. That kind of goes hand in hand with when I'm, every time I see someone, like a girl I want to talk to, they all have wedding rings or they're all with somebody. You know, it's, I, I don't know, I, I, I just feel lost because it's like, I, okay, what do I do? The dating apps right. are obviously a f fucking dry riverbed. There's nothing there. Um, hopefully Chad can't hear my fridge having a fucking orgasm over there. <laughs> it's like, you've heard it. You know what it does. Um, so yeah, that crap's kind of bothering me. It, it's. I mean, and look, I'm just going to keep adding on to this. So it's not just a friends thing or a date or not just a dating thing, but it kind of goes with friends because I've, I'm, I feel like I'm making no connections anywhere. Right. So what you're experiencing right now is a deficiency. And so now your system is falling back into potentially, again, take this with a grain of salt. Um, that you're experiencing that. So you're experiencing a deficiency and it's threatening the level of your your hierarchy of needs that's associated with it. Yes. So, your, so your system is resorting back to different ways in order to feel how it can to be able to obtain that need. Yes. Did I get, did I get it? Yeah, I mean that, yeah. Pause, pause real quick. This is why I do what I do. <laughs> anyway. Okay, uh, because I, I can just add stuff to it. Um, so, uh, there's that one girl I told you about, like her and I, kind of, we met on the dating app. She ended up getting a boyfriend, the one that lives closer to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think I told you that she had called me because she broke up with her boyfriend, the whole thing happened, whatever. She, yeah, that was concerning. Yeah, she reached out to me. I wasn't, like, doing anything. She was like, I oh, know, I that's just... that's why I said that's the concerning part. Yeah, she was like, I just have nobody to talk to, and so you're the only that's... person I could, like, think of. I was like, okay, well, wow. sure. And then, you know, her and I was just kind of talking, you know, I'm just, I'll just check in every few days. I'm like, you know, how you doing? You know, 
She's like, oh, you know, things are going, blah, 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 blah. Either good or bad. And we just got to discuss it a little bit. And and so I, like, reached out. I was like, hey, would you like to hang out? You know, because, you know, try to get you out of the house or whatever. And plus, I need people to hang out with. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, yeah, freaking, we can do, uh, you know, we can meet up this weekend, which was this past weekend. And this is one thing that, I mean, I don't know why it seems like fucking everybody does this would they set up plans and not not just that they bail on the plans but they like to bail but not tell you they're gonna bail until after the time has passed so and that bugs the uh, shit out of me it's like i'm sitting here all day going where are you at like, what's going on? Are we doing this today? And then it's like 7 p.m. Oh, sorry, I didn't respond to you, you know, through the whole fucking day. Um, I was at this thing. It's like, really? You didn't have 15 fucking seconds? Like, hey, can't make it today. Sorry, we'll talk later. Like, so I'm sitting so, there all day. Waiting. Be... Yeah, and it's that not could... just her. It, it, it's fucking everybody. It can be a result of your attachment style. <laughs> I'm sorry. It can be a result of your attachment style. Well, I also find it just to be rude. I mean, no, it is. It is rude. It's not excused. It's not excusable either. Mm-hmm. Like that isn't. And I want to emphasize this. I'm saying like, because I want to also understand. Do you want me to like, you know, psychologically explain this, or do you want me to empathize? Uh, oh, what do you think is better? <laughs> I mean, we could do both. All it's right, just like, it. I also would be mindful of like your situation because this is a very real feeling, right? And I imagine you are not the only one that feels like this. So, <sighs> and I'm saying that because I also want to welcome chat. Don't, for, don't worry. I didn't forget about you. Is that, um, <sighs> it's that people because i don't want to blame everything for trauma but so much is because of trauma it's like if people only knew no this also Uh, happens with the other friend yeah i know that's why i said now i'm gonna get into the psychology of this so have you heard of attachment styles Mm Hmm. okay i know we've talked about them before right yes Chat, if you want to know what it is, just ask what are those, if you're interested. Because we've already gone through it before. I know, we've already gone through this. Um, I want to emphasize that because you have an anxious attachment style, Mm -hmm. there's a high likelihood that you attract people with avoidant attachment style. Or, no, 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 not attract, are attracted to. Uh, That's important wording. That you're attracted towards people with avoidant attachment style. And because of that, they engage in an avoidant behavior, such as not telling you that they're available until after, uh, until after the time, or they never tell you, or they tell you very passively, um, shit like that. Okay. Uh, maybe you can challenge this thought because it's always, I hear this a lot it's it's always these are the people you are attracted to you know i keep hearing that a lot but Mm -hmm. then i keep coming back with it's like look i talk to anybody that's willing to talk to me you know i'll chat it up with anybody i know you have i know you have an anxious attachment of course you would yeah so i'll just chat it up with anybody but it's not like i'm like hey i want to hang out with this person because they're that way it's like these are the only people that are still talking to me Yes, that is the whole point that people say of you two were attracted to each other before you knew that you were attracted to each other, or you were going to be friends before you realized that you were going to be friends. Right. Because these are the unspoken traits that your system already picked up before you consciously realized it, and therefore, here you are again. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
I, I, that doesn't really explain why though like it's only the avoidant people that want to talk to me so the avoidant people want to talk to you because you're you're going to express a lot of excitement to them so it makes the it gets the avoidant people to get their their emotional needs met by being a version of self that they think that you're going to like right and so then what happens is that you really like it and everything feels all hunky dory and stuff like that but then the the avoidant is gonna still want to feel in control and feel like if you're getting too close they're going to change that and do behavior that pushes you away right uh -huh. and um or at least create some distance avoiding people i like to call the arm length apart uh lovers um because they're saying i love you and then if you have your like your arm up in front of you they're like and this is how far i'm going to allow you to be close to me that was bullshit gotcha uh, and so and you're easy to get hooked line and sinker to that because they're showing you a smidge of attention and security to which um, you're missing out on. So there's your need and their emotional need gets met because you think they're exciting and so forth, but you don't really get to know them. So they feel better in control still and they feed off each other. But then what happens after the honeymoon phase of that feeling is over or the lack of consistency or more comfortability or more time around each other la 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 the uh avoidant will start to be like say oh i'm a i'm a head out um but they still want you because they like this feeling with you or you know it still can be genuine connection obviously i'm just talking about attachment as if it wasn't it's just a separate entity because a lot of people also try to keep their uh attachment style as like a very closely pinned to them like to maybe even sometimes excuse their behavior um because here's the kicker you don't get any excuse of any of this by the way um disclaimer because you did not cause the pain but it is your responsibility to heal from the pain period mm-hmm Now, so I'll... with that being said, Go real ahead. quick, is that um, is the last piece I want to say is that can can attachment styles be uh, like can they change right mm -hmm. or are they locked in forever? They so this is, can get a little controversial in the field, but I'm gonna just say it. Uh, I think attachment styles can be um, you know supported and managed to resemble secure attachment um if that's like the goal and they're still and like and that could still lean into a form of security um and uh attachment is a spectrum um and so with it being a spectrum um so people can live much more secure attachment style ways but still have tendencies from their wounds that show up in their interpersonal relationships, in their connection with their emotional experiences, in, um, uh, what's another one? In, um, their, oh, their ability to manage stress and, so, and um, stress and their symptom comorbidity, like, all these things so yeah i just wanted to emphasize that because i feel sometimes people feel like they can't move they can't change and i think it's very possible i think all people can no matter what age um it's just will look differently for everyone right um that brings up the question that why why like you would think that a, people with anxious attachment style would freaking lock onto each other no but why don't they if, if because, because if well because you know, like i'm just gonna like say the point it's just because okay. if i'm willing to talk to anybody and give people attention like hey i want to hang out with i want to hang out i want to hang out all the damn time and then 
if someone else has that same mindset, why the hell do those people not? Because if I get somebody that's like, hey, I want to hang out with you all the time, I'll get fucking excited and go, yeah, I got someone to spend time with. This is great. And if they have the same thought process, will not they be like, oh my God, this is great. I got somebody to hang out with. This is awesome. Um, so, no. <laughs> Sorry. Because of the other side or another piece to attachment we haven't talked about. Um, okay. And that is the trust, the trust with self. Okay. What's that? So, so attachment um also develops our first lessons when it comes to our ability to trust our own needs and our connection with our gut intuition so what does that look like well ultimately um there's gonna be times where freaking um sorry this game is also it's really hard to do walk and chew gum right now um oh fuck um i'm like oddly competitive in these types of settings <sighs> and i hate it foosball um anyway so what the hell was i saying oh so trust with self so the thing is is that children have the specific um they have the specific need <sighs> we're fucked that was um, only one okay tell me again oh my god Go. I don't even know. Ugh. Oh no! Oh, God, I can't get in front of it. These fucking people on this other team are fucking feeling it. Yeah, they are. God damn it! Why are they anyway. keeping it backwards? Right. Anyway, so is the trust with self. So ch children have only like in their their limbic system, which is the one of the first things that develops, right? right? Emo like rational doesn't develop until much later. They learn a basic emotion that is called separation anxiety. Separation anxiety se uh, slash sadness is a way that people signal that somebody's need or that their safety is being compromised that is not threatening or can be controversial, you know, or whatever, or it's not intended to be threatening, right? Um, and so it signals saying, hey, someone come help me. Right. Right. So with that being said, um, so they cry and when they cry and a caregiver shows up to supporting them, a consistent enough amount of time so that doesn't mean it has to be perfect or look it has to be the same every time or excuse me it's that they are always 100 percent there it's just that it has to be consistent enough that the child makes a correlation that this is that their uh this person will show up right when they share their needs and when this happens it teaches the the individual saying oh I can trust that when I get a signal for a need that and because someone shows up and show and like supports it, that means it's true. Like my feeling is true. Right. Mm -hmm. And therefore you develop a trust in your feelings to say, oh, I can use this as a way to guide me and support me. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is uh it's a survival need like you need that in order to um make it period um so again because we have to kind of think a little bit like evolution um so with that being said sounds um, like your freaking microphone stuffed in your shirt so um so because of that um People that have that consistency have the secure. Well, what happens when the person's not as consistent, um, but maybe just a little bit more consistent or like a little less, but a little bit more consistent than uh, avoidant, the avoidant attachment style, that you will start to, um, you will start to get the message of saying, maybe I can't trust my feelings because the person is showing up when they want to show up or whatever you know and so they know when i need my needs met but i don't know when i need my needs met right so right. what they develop so what they develop is the um uh, is the 
the the ability to trust others but an impacted trust towards self that's what happens with anxious attachment style why is that important to your initial question is because um if these folks meet each other they can't trust themselves or they may have low self-esteem um significantly low self-esteem to the point where they can't trust that they're a good lover or a good partner or a good friend or someone that is reliable and so forth so they will um you know shame themselves you know emotionally talk themselves down i'm bad blah, 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 these things and then what happens is that they have a self-fulfilling prophecy to make that true because they can't stand the anxiety if it actually not being true and what if this person actually is going to love me and support me can't have that happening it's too uncomfortable the first people that were supposed to do that failed so um and that hurt way too much so what do we do instead oh my gosh i hate this i'm stop i'm trying to get there now but about timing timing <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> no. I'll cry again. I or oh, <laughs> stop watching me. I'm gonna cry again. Well, with me, like I oh, even they grabbed me. Did you see that <laughs> yeah. nonsense? Ugh. But even with that whole mindset, it's like I've been challenging that. and It's it, going to take a lot of time. I hope you know that, right? Yeah, but I mean, there's been, I don't know how many times, like, especially within like the last year or so, where it's like I want to go do something, but like deep down it's like i it's like i'd rather just stay home because i don't feel like i belong there by force myself to go do it yeah because you have an impacted sense of trust so um you are starting to have a self-fulfilling prophecy that you're acting out upon like in real time because you already have this notion that they're gonna think i'm creepy they're gonna think you know these messages uh-huh uh and because of that, that is the self-fulfilling prophecy. So then you uh, will, because even if it's already, it's not true, but your brain will make the correlation that's as, as close to truth as it is to justify it. But I mean, no, <laughs> you're already lying. This is why when people are like, I'm not lying to myself when I say mean things to myself. I'm like, yeah, you are. Um, but you're so deep in the denial. You might as well have floaties as it is a river in Egypt. So um, try saying nice things to yourself because if the self, you know, the shame piece of it all actually was as effective as people wished it was, I think, um, that they would, uh, it would work but it never works and you're just more you're just miserable but you're so comfortable with the miserable that it just continues to be allowed um and the idea that somebody could just be secure it hurts it just hurts too much for some folk okay then that brings up my next question because i sit here and i look at these situations i'm dealing with and my brain keeps going back to that yeah you're not good enough kind of deal but that's after it already loops through all the other shit it's like because I'm sitting there, it's like, well, I have this. I'm like this. My personality is good. You know, I'm a good looking guy. I freaking got my shit together. I'm trying to improve my life even better. I have a personality, yeah. all this good shit. So why is it not working? That's the oh, question that keeps it, popping up. It, I'm like, why the fuck is it still failing then? Because What am I not saying? Oh, let me give you a little bit of classes to see. I'll give you a little monocle. Um, Here's the piece is that... I encourage you to break things down into in like the way that you process your behaviors is you break them down into thoughts and to a separate section into feelings and then another one into behaviors. And I want you to see how you have both these thoughts of your, you know, how love, you know, how you have these good characteristics. And then I want you to notice in your thought that there's one thought or a few miniature thoughts that are like negative. 
right uh, or like have negative tones which is also called a negative bias which is also natural um but can chronically be inflated because of trauma um Ow. by the way um that um that you hear them so then what does your fe your feelings do it fuses to the those feelings and she says i choose that these are the feelings i'm going to act upon and because of that it must be true except it's not because feelings aren't true um not that they don't have value it's that they can't be so as like something solidly like factual so they're not in themselves truth um they are experiences that fluctuate quite a lot in a day so anyway um so you have that feeling your system choose or has got comfortable of leading into that decision or that decision as the feeling it chooses and then with those in mind you make a behavior or you're reacting to a behavior that best aligns with it the response you need to learn is that you can have those thoughts you can have those feelings and you can still choose a separate behavior and just see what's going to be the result of it because when you do that you start to challenge those and when you start to challenge those that it increases your response flexibility in your brain to which you can increase the amount of time between your desire to react and your ability to respond Okay, so that's a lot of stuff that confuses me. Um, so, do you want to just go through this process and break it down? <laughs> I don't even know where I begin. Yeah, me either. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> so, so, uh, okay, okay. Here, let me let me start like this. Because I'll go back to the what I say to myself. I remember. I remember. Okay. By the way. So you need to separate. So if you're somebody that is like, why is this behavior not changing? Right? And you've already got past the place of fully believing that it's somebody else's fault. So let's just take them out of the equation and see ourselves for a second. Right? We need to see ourselves. When we see ourselves, we have to look at situations and break them down into three categories. Feelings, or thoughts, feelings, behaviors. I will okay. stop there for a second. Are you okay? Oh my God. What happened? Oh, I fell. Me too. I don't know what that was. I felt like I hit like an invisible I wall. That's what I felt too, because I was just there, and all of a sudden I just ducked down, and then Artemis he got did too. Yeah. We are just well. Let's can I leave yet? So, yep. Um. So you break them down to feel or thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, right? So you have all of these thoughts related to this situation, right? And when you have all these thoughts related to this situation, it just kind of lists out in your head, right? Like my good and qualities or like, what, what do you mean? All, all of them. Because okay. what we're not going to do right now for just one second, we're not going to say the thoughts. I know you didn't, but I'm just going to specify. We're not going to say the thoughts are good or bad, right? We're just going to say they're just thoughts. Okay. And so you have these ones about your appearance. You have these ones about your... um about your qualities you have these thoughts about like um how like there's attributes of you that look like they uh kind of align with this person right you have all these types of thoughts and then in all of these thoughts you will have one or two thoughts related to this person's gonna think i'm a creep this person thinks that i am a this person thinks that i am going to like do something right and in that, um, are we pausing before the next round real quick? Yeah, so sure. I can finish this thought. We are. We are. So, um, sorry, I was trying to tell Artemis that. So, in that, there's all of these thoughts 
but what your feelings have done is that it has chosen those two those thoughts that are aligned with self-deprecation or something that puts yourself down or or takes away something from you and it says i'm choosing these ones to be truth because and i'm going to attach this feeling or the feelings towards the, that thought so then you have the thought and the feeling when you have the thought and the feeling then what happens is that you you end up um you end up sitting there with that within you so you leave that in your external world what do you mean you you just like you don't act on it yet that's it's just in your mind or in your body if you have this ability to do so not everyone does so what happens is that this just because you have the thought and the feeling does not mean it has to dictate what the behavior is going to come out right okay because people with a reactive mind just like will just have an automatic behavior but sometimes people have behaviors that are not aligned with what we're used to how people react to certain situations correct yeah right so sometimes people don't react in a way we think and we may even have energy and feelings and emotions to get ready for that reaction but it doesn't happen so you're like oh my god i thought this was going to happen and it didn't that's wild right my partner has uh experienced this before we've talked about this before where we have thought that like some situation is going to happen and that the, when the other person gets home we are going to have an argument but we never argue so we just were like wow now my stomach hurts from all that energy i built up for an argument <laughs> um but we don't argue so that being said um we or so then what happens is that what when we start to understand we have more power right here in this spot of it all is that we can start to pause more right here before behavior and we do this by using skills like dbt skills which i talked about last week what are those and like or what what does that stand for dialectic behavioral therapy okay or, or theory anyway but anyway and in that is the skill base that helps with increasing the space between reacting and responding okay right so it uses skills that help you in the moment that help you before something happens and even helps you look at things after they've passed which is really cool and helpful um shout out to the dbt therapist out there uh i know you get a lot of shit because you have to you're actually the ones that say here's the skill to do it and people are, are uncomfortable and you get the shit for that i see you i appreciate you anyway but uh and like other skills too like there's mentalization skills or all these things but we don't have all the time for that anyway long story short then the more that you use these skills to like to create space between the situation and your desire to respond you start to make decisions aligned with your values right and when you start to do that then you have now tapped into the authentic version of yourself when you tap into that that is you rediscovering or recovering yourself because a lot of times in trauma the authentic self is lost because of shame trauma hurt anger disappointment blah 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 and so we are lost from our authentic selves but many a times when we want to know how we really are in our authentic selves and what how we know how what's my evidence why people want to be their authentic self 
because one of the things they aim to do is find a partner that they feel like they can be themselves around. And that is such a common theme in every relationship I've ever heard of so far. So it is what we always aim in for ourselves. So if we get an opportunity to experience that secure attachment, we don't want to lose it. Right. Um, and so if you ever want to know, if, especially if you're someone that's still like struggling, like, am I being authentic? Am I even a human? I hear that question every day at my job. Um, but when you do things like that, you get, or like, or excuse me, when you get to do, when you start to increase your response flexibility, the way that that space between reacting and responding, when you start to develop more, you can give the authenticity to yourself. So you, that's when people are like, oh, you don't need somebody. Because when you're alone, you start to have to, or you may have to start to like sit with yourself. And when you sit with yourself, which is you can start to get to know elements about yourself that you like and you don't like and can work on them so that you can start liking them or at least be able to live with it. So is it, are you able to heal with or alone? Yes. And you could do it with others in certain ways. So yeah, that's, that's all the pieces together. So it sounds like in my situation, What? God, I hate saying this out loud because I've fucking heard this so many goddamn times, but it's I still don't understand it. People, maybe I don't know. People are always saying you have to. How the fuck do they word it? Um, it's like don't bring other people into your life because you don't even. God, how the fuck do they say it? Like how are other people supposed to love you if you don't love yourself? Maybe is that it? Um, something along those lines. Something like that. It's like you shouldn't bring other people into your life if you don't have your own shit together, essentially, or something like that. Something along those lines, yeah. Yeah. Because so that brings up other thoughts. Because goddamn, freaking thoughts are hard to freaking place together. Um. Fuck, I don't even know where to start with this. I, I, God damn it. Ah! Did I blow your mind? No, it, it's... Wait, 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 wait. I want to pause for a second because response is... I want to say something. Hold on, let me think about it real quick. I'm just trying to find out where to start. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Go see? ahead. I want to say... For anyone listening, or if you want to take this as a sample to folks of like seeing like, hey, what do you hear on this particular stream? I just gave some top tier shit right now. <laughs> shit that some folks couldn't even imagine. So I hope y'all bank off of it. Um, filtered underscore pork every Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right. Okay. So, I kind of lost where I was going with that. Um, it, it basically, w when you said all that, then th there was a thought that popped in my head that says, you should not be wanting somebody else around because this is i know this is going to go back to a is this what I thought, wait, is this a thought you're having yeah or Tell me more. had moments i want ago. to hear more so when you were just you were saying that my brain went to a point where it says because i've been i keep telling myself i need somebody around friends family whatever just somebody but then once you say that my brain goes maybe i shouldn't have people around i should I need to figure out how to stop wanting people around and I don't know if I want to put the fucking, I'm just going to say it words. Uh, I need to accept the process of isolation and learn how to fucking just be okay with it. 
in a sense that that could be one thing but i would actually encourage you to do something else yeah because look because i have these thoughts that go back and forth because i hear you say things that people need people essentially it is literally worse we are set up to be people that need people yes social monkey um but then i hear on the other end it's like you need to learn how to be okay with being alone who says that i've heard people say that i no, can't I give know. names because i don't know all these fucking hundreds of people i you hear it oh. online i've heard people now, in the no, past. No, no 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 it doesn't matter you don't have to tell me i just want you to think of another piece how much of them are healthy i have no idea i don't know i don't know them well enough or what if about I, some of the people that are close to around you right now i said something like that well i kind of picked that up on what you just said mm. but other than that it, all those other people they're not really around anymore because like i said i don't have i literally have nobody around anymore I, I I can't stress that enough. How I I I have this thought. It's like there is nobody there. I've like I literally reached out to everybody I could possibly think of this past weekend, and on freaking Fourth uh, of July, and I got zero response, or not zero response per se, but mm. I I spent the entire weekend and all day Tuesday alone. Wow. very unhappy about it so like i said when you go who said this who do you know personally it's like i don't think i know anybody anymore because i don't i don't know people i don't know how to interact with people i i'm fucking lost mm. i got nothing and it's infuriating and so then my brain starts you know getting fucking depressed about it but then after what you say this i feel like i need to figure out how to be okay with having nobody around but then i said that that was an option okay so it's an option but that was stuck in my head yep because your brain heard what it wanted to hear and attached an emotion and here we are no, 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 no. i don't want to say that it's it heard what it wanted to hear it's mm. you're speaking a language that i don't fully understand so i'm trying to decipher it Mm. the best of my mm -hmm. abilities mm -hmm. that's also another angle yeah so it's not like oh you heard when you under here no you're speaking spanish to me i know a couple of words i'm piecing the shit together mm. you know so and then on the other aspect because because like i said i've heard I, I need to stay off social media but i've heard it on like youtube videos because i look up how to deal with freaking like what to do when you're by yourself how to cope with this shit and then i hear the other answer it's like people need people it's like okay well these two things in my head are fighting each other either learn to be alone or fucking you need people how like i, I mean i feel like i need to i mean i'm trying to work on both ends of this how to be okay by yourself and also find people to so you're not by yourself but those are, you know, I, I feel like I'm putting the positive end of two magnets together and they are just mm -hmm. repelling. Okay. It feels like First a contradiction all, want, on itself. Do you want to start another round? Oh, sure. I know Artemis is probably getting bored. He's going through all of the menu really quickly and it's bothering my eyes. I don't care. I, I have no chill. I announce things all the time. Um, so, did you see him rude? Is that what you're depicting me as? <laughs> Can't do it. I still got a bunch of shit I want to get through. So, I know, but such is not rushing the process, right? So, anyway, I'm saying, I would say that, like, another approach that you can do in all of this is that I encourage you... <laughs> Um, to connect with folks but you still use those skills to like challenge that everything is through a negative or through the negative bias like and you can do that with a bunch of people in the sense of like if you go to like social settings or like your athletic stuff 
I encourage you, or even when you go to the gym, don't automatically feel like you assume the worst. Keep in mind that a lot of folks are traumatized. Um, oh, I know and, that. And so they are reacting to that all the time. So even in the times you are using very great skills, and trust me, I want to give you a shout out. You have been doing great and you've been working on yourself and I hear you. Even with the big feelings you're doing right now. But even in you being alone recently, you it sounds like you're more attuned to your emotional experiences than you have been for... I mean, you once used to be very reactive and you have definitely increased in your response. Mm -hmm. So there's a possibility in addition to all of this, you're actually getting better, except when you get better, it thins out the herd on who you have accessible to you as a reciprocating healthy partner. Because a lot of people are raw dogging their trauma. I mean, that would explain why basically, I mean, because you've known this with my friend and also the um, other girl who's uh, dealing with uh, her immediate family. You know her. Um, mm -hmm. It's, I feel like the more, I mean, this is also something that's kind of going back to me being confused because I feel like the more I work on myself, I mean, I, it's like, I don't like blaming other people because I was always raised to like, fuck it, it's your problem, deal with it. So that might be bad. Oh, but, pause, pause. What did you just say? Which part? Me saying that, uh, stop blaming other people. And so what did you learn to do instead? Blame, well, I'm in, I'm in charge of my own feelings and how I deal with shit, so no. it's my problem. No, 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 You're speaking that through the lens of the adult. What, as a child, did you hear when you received that message? Grow up and deal with it yourself. Internalize it <laughs> and, you know, in turn, which is also a very toxic fucking term. Um, and has pro practically killed people, but whatever, what do I know, right? Um, is that you learned the, in had heard the message, um, keep it inside, or it says blame yourself. And like, that's what you heard, like, and it's gonna be your fault and it's all like you know it's a lot of internal shame and guilt because it's th it's like if you don't do that people won't be around you and therefore it threatens your attachment style right oh, god damn that just fucking sorry i'm having more flashbacks about how people reacted to me swinging both sides of the plate on that shit um this is why i do this for a living yeah so where the hell was i going with that um son of a bitch so, it might not be us because like this person keeps touching me. we okay, got it so. but oh, fuck, where was i going with that it, it, uh, what i was saying is i i tend not to blame other people because that just seems fucked up because like, yeah, yeah so like i said so. people said stop blaming other people for your problems um, yeah it's because like stop blaming people for your problems so that means you only blame yourself for your problems so you what do you adopt you adopt then only blaming yourself um or saying like i'm creepy or it's me and it's me it's me it's me it's me and i'm just like man oh man in all of the years i have known you a lot of it is also them and you do not mention it like nearly as much as you mention it about yourself. Well, because that's what like society and parents and fucking everybody has always told me. It's like this is your fault. Yes. Nobody else's. That, that's the trauma. That is literally you have finally said it. It is that is your trauma. Trauma is not. Um, this guy's just trauma. Wrong. It. 
trauma is not freaking like not i mean it can be like a car crash and you know sexual abuse and shit like that right it could be all those things but it also can be like your your you know like your parents inability to control their anger and it could be your like it could be like your like sibling silence when you got something that you wanted or needed and they didn't get something they wanted or needed like it can be these things and that's why people are like oh i don't have trauma everyone has trauma and if you lie if you say you don't that means i'm definitely concerned for you the most i should talk to my gym buddy um but anyway so with the whole not wanting to blame other people i mean just based off what we're talking about i feel like i have to logically because what? it seems wait do what blame other people you have to learn to differentiate or like you need to decipher a bit more the lines of what is somebody's responsibility and your own that's the goal well let me finish my thought because this is something that's really been bothering me and i think i expressed it before it's the more work i put in on like oh, it, wow. it, it goes with anything working on my mental state working on my physical you know health Oh my god. So mental health, physical health, my ability to, you know, uh, just uh, communicate with people. Because, I mean, if you talk to me like, a couple of years ago when I started going back to school, when the professor was like, hey, read this in front of the class, I was fucking sweating bullets. Even when I started streaming, it's like I had this crazy anxiety. I mean, sometimes I still do, but it's like I just get over it. I'm like, fuck it, deal with it, do it, and then you'll get better at it. Mm -hmm. And so, but it seems like with anything, the better I try to make myself in all these aspects, it seems like the further away people get from me. It's like, no, I, no, 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 Well, let me just finish this. Cause like, I used to be able to hang out with certain people. How the hell we get eliminated anyway. So the, I used to hang out with certain people. And then I got my ass in shape, and then now those people don't want to talk to me anymore. Probably, you know, I'm just, this is just assuming, this has no merit behind it, that they feel threatened by me in a sense, because I'm like, hey, do you guys want to do this? Let's go do this. Let's go for a hike. Let's go do something. Like, instead of just standing around doing nothing all days, I'm trying to encourage them to do other stuff. They don't want to hear it, because that's, that's not the them. Thing. But that's the thing, maybe that's like, are you hearing them on the, what they want to do? And are you meeting them with what they want to do too? Their answer is just, no, I don't want to. They don't come up with a rebuttal. Well, maybe they, again, they could be folks that didn't feel like they could have a rebuttal. Um, but you could also say, oh, okay, if not that, it's like, what's something you'd like to do? Well, and, and I, you don't I've switched over to that because and like i do that and with people that i know the day just refuse i'm like hey what do you guys want to do you want to hang out you guys want to go do something the answer is just no i don't want to i don't want to do that i don't want to do that and if you recall from last comic-con remember i suggested to the one of the guys you know i was like let's go to this thing downtown where they're oh, having that party yeah, yeah and... but the problem is the problem is that these are also very emotionally or excuse me these are also very like unhealth like mentally unhealthy people too well that's what i'm trying to c come back around to so i try not to blame them and say that they're unhealthy because there's that aspect and then with the, the i'm just gonna call her the girl you know it's what i'm talking about she would come to me to, with her problems and then i would listen to her let her vent and then she kept coming keeps coming back i try to go basically what she calls therapy mode i'm like well how do you feel about that what do you think would do this blah 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 and then she just shuts down and now she won't talk to me 
anytime I'm like, hey, do you want to hang out? You want to play video games? Nothing. It's fucking ghost town. She does not want to talk to me anymore because like she'll bitch about something. And then I go into, I'm like, well, why do you think that's happening? Blah, blah, blah. And she's just like, it's like, okay, so I'm making a conscious effort to make myself better mentally. And I try to use those skills. So when people come to me, I'll be like, okay, well, how can I respond to this in a way that's not going to, you know, be anger or whatever, or just like, well, you're fucking being stupid. You know, how can I break this down? Be helpful to this person. That's the problem. It sounded like you're trying to fix this for her. Do you know she wanted you to fix that for her? Oh, she doesn't. I know she doesn't. But then I'm also tired of hearing keep... the same fucking thing. Then you need to remove yourself when she starts talking about this. And if you do that in some capacity, whatever removing yourself from that looks like, and she still doesn't want to like communicate with you after or anything like that, that means this is not a solid connection and you're having a temporary person. This person had, they got gained something from this that they no longer gain, but they're just stringing you along. Right. Well, that's that why. That is your responsibility to change. Well, God damn it! Ah, but it's where the hell was I going with that? So, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to, like, whenever they bring this up, because it, you know, it's happened like somewhat recently, you know, within like the last two weeks, they bring it up about something, complaining about the same shit, and I'll just. Uh, they'll be like, oh, you know, I hate this about this or whatever. I'm just like, or like, I don't know if I can. Do I'm like, oh, you can do it. You know, I believe in you. And they're like, no, it, uh, like, I'm not like, there's no way that's going to happen. And I just respond. I was like, that's the spirit. Just give up and don't try. That always works because I just got tired of hearing it. I'm just like, fine, then just stop trying. You know, I know, and that sounded like I was being a fucking dick because they're like, oh, you know, I want to get this job or whatever. And I was like, you can do it. You know, apply, call them. Like, you have the skills. You can do this. No, they would never accept me. I was like, that's the spirit. Just give up and don't fucking try. It's because I'm tired of hearing it. It's like, I tried giving her positive advice and she doesn't want to hear it. And I'm just like, fine, because just fucking quit. Because she doesn't want it. Yeah, but so she just wants also, to. Also, you also reacted. You, I did. Did you hear that? Yeah. And it, because that's what I'm trying to, okay, I really want you to try to hear me, okay? I'm trying. I really want you to hear me when I say, as and I hope you hear this because right now there could also be a possibility because whenever we start getting like our react, we reactive, that brain of like old process or like to respond starts to shut down. So stick with me, okay? Working on it. Okay. So she is indicating to you she wants to use this as a place that she can a safe place for her to share her feelings about the situation uh -huh. this is not aligned with what you want this dynamic to look like because you want to solve this for her but she is not receptive to this to being solved and you are not in a place of wanting to just keep hearing these tones and her feelings and her like um the negative like or what not even negative but just her approach to oh it's pretty what's negative <laughs> i mean that's subjective to her because this also might be self-soothing to her to do something like this we can't define that because she's making an active choice to stay in this mental space too she may not know it but her body is right so you are clearly hearing her mental health as much as possible and you need to make a conscious decision if you're going to continue to put up with it or not and if you in hearing this choose to still hang out with her these are the consequences of your actions Okay. Well, that's why I'm not hanging out with her. Because okay. I, I said it went through the three stages of how I deal with it. First, they come to me with the problem. 
and I just let them vent, sympathize with them. Oh, okay, yeah, that sounds terrible. You know, like, I'm sorry, blah, 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 blah. And then it keeps coming up, keeps coming up. Same thing. Nothing's changed. Just repetitive shit. Yes. And eventually I go, okay, and have you tried this? You tell, so why don't you, if it keeps coming up and you and you offer, so this is, this is the kind of like script I'd suggest to you. The script is when you hear it once or twice or even three times the same thing mm -hmm. after that point when y'all are in a place where you're not talking about this you're going to say hey i've heard you talk about this topic a couple of times now and i've offered suggestions and i feel like i'm not like the suggestions are not helping can you tell me what what kind of support you need in those times and if if that's what you want to give to them but if you don't want to do that then you can also say oh when you talk about this because you haven't been receptive to it i feel a little bit neglected in my ability to show up in our relationship or I, in this like relationship i feel like i've expressed that okay so if you've expressed that and they have shown that they are not listening to you in that that means the point of the point of it all is that they are not doing this because they're they have your best intentions in mind they are getting something from you yes so you need to make the conscious decision to not oh there you go good job <laughs> thanks you have to you need to make the conscious decision to say, why do I keep putting up with this? Well, I'm not. And, okay, then that being said, you, then that's it. Like, that means that if she, so what you can do is that you can hold some time between you and this person. And if you come back around or they come back around, you have to make them clear saying, if this is going to work, this is what I need in the future. And if they are still not receptive, you have to make a decision or not to just let that person go. Because it shows that they're not going to change at this time to the way that is aligned to how you think this, to help you stay in this relationship. So you need to stop hurting yourself with something that's not going to work out. But you could also walk away and saying, hey, I did everything i needed to do to do see i and walk away said i did the best or the best i could oh my god they gave me a countdown it's like are you still playing you're about to get booted because i had just stood here the whole time um Ew. yeah i mean because like i said they uh, made it they because like i said for a while they brought the problem to me and it's mm -hmm. been the same problem i sympathized for you know a few weeks oh i'm sorry blah 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 things will get better you know, you got this. And then same problem, same problem. I was like, well, have you thought, have you tried this? And give them some suggestions. They ignored all those suggestions. So then I kind of went therapy mode. I'm like, well, why do you feel that way? And yada, yada. And, you know, is do you think it could be this? Or what do you think? Blah, blah, blah. You know, therapy mode like you do. And mm -hmm. that's when they started shutting down a bit. But then anytime they talk to me, it's always like, like the if i get a text message it's like my job sucks or i hate my life it's like and it got to a point i'm like have you done anything to change it no then i don't want to fucking hear it i'm over it it's the same shit over and over and over again you're just using me as a fucking sympathy pool and i don't want to do it anymore because like every time i try to explain to you my issues you fucking wander off like it like i don't yes. matter so it's like yes. all right well fuck off then i don't want to talk to you so pause what you just said right now is healthy boundaries. Okay. You did you did it, kid. That's it. That's literally it. You're saying I know my value enough to say I my feelings matter too to be heard in this relationship and you're not gonna put up with their bullshit of not listening to your feelings anymore. So you're gonna go fucking find people that actually give a shit about you. And that's a later conversation. We're just going to take a moment to pause because I know your brain's going to be like, but, 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 and I actually don't want to hear it this time. Hi. I just God want... We didn't qualify. I just want you to sit and identify that you 
are developing healthy boundaries with yourself. You are on the steps to the road of recovery and there may be a possibility the feelings that you're feeling are called are called growing pains. I already went through puberty. I don't need this shit anymore. Um, Congrats. Congratulations. Yeah, I mean, and that just kind of wraps back around. I mean, just looking at my notes, it's like I'm I'm just so fucking tired of having to be the one that reaches out to everybody when I need something. Or I mean, I mean, because this bugs the piss out of me. I I've sat there at times. I've like you know, I don't know if you want to call it a test or ran an experiment. I was like, let's see how long I can go without contacting anybody to see who like goes, hey, what are you up to, or how are you doing. And guess yeah, what? People just don't fucking come to me. Then I'm just like, all right, well, it shows you how much I fucking matter to anybody. And then that enters the whole, well, what's wrong with me? Why do people not want to be around me? And then it just goes down that hole again. Where did Artemis go? He's done. Oh, I'm okay. all. I'm down to still talk, but I'm also done playing the game. All right, we can quit the game then. Um, and I'll just go back to the discussion part because we still got like about 15 minutes. Okay. okay damn the things like it. hold on, i'm gonna quit this fucking game it it drags so much ass on my computer i don't know how a game so simple can just shut down my computer the way it does it's insane have you tried turning it off and turning it back on yeah a lot of times <clears throat> it's only that game which is weird i mean there are other there are other games that drag my computer down horribly and will crash my streams but they're usually extremely high graphics kind of games. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it makes sense. Yeah. Alright, so I want to bring up some other shit. Hmm? So I want to bring up some other shit. Sorry. You got here. 15 minutes. Yep. All right. So, I mean, just to finish that thought, that basically, so when I start going through that things, I need to just, I guess, assume that just basically 99% of people around me suck shit. And I just have to accept that they suck shit and fucking deal with being alone and just hope that good people wander through in my non-social environments i was gonna say we invited or like you we were you know, we're fine because we had plans but you also financially couldn't go yeah so and, that's another piece yeah that's another piece that's also depressing it's like i like how i can't be happy because i don't have money so money can buy happiness i don't care what anybody says um but uh, all right so that's the end of that i don't i don't know how to go into that any further Oh, you have another one. Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of bummed that okay. chat didn't participate today. There are a few people in here for a while. I don't know. I think, like I said, we I, I got to reset this thing up. Maybe the fall guys thing is like pushing people out. Um, mm. so like I don't know. I'll look into doing something this week and see if we can fix it. Maybe it'll just next week will just be only discussion, and I'll just have like calm music in the background or something. Mm, that'd be nice. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Let me check my nose. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, we basically covered all that shit. Um, so, I don't know if I mentioned this to you before. Maybe I did last week. So, there's this other girl at the gym who's a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. Now, this... Well, I'll, I'll get to the feelings part of it later. So, how's this go? Basically, she she was training the or she is training this older lady, um, who, uh, my gym buddy and I kind of had conversations with just around the gym. She's like, "Oh, you guys work really hard, blah blah blah." So we, you know, you know we've made a connection. Like we talked to each other, and so she's working out with this trainer, and so when she was working out with the trainer my buddy and I were like sitting there like near them just doing our own thing and she kind of struck up a conversation and then the trainer kind of got involved and so I started talking to the trainer super cute girl super nice 
and over like the last couple of weeks, you know, I've kind of been talking to her more and mm-hmm. even like yesterday and today, I was like, man, she's really nice. And like today she's just kind of like sat down with me between clients and we were just like shooting the shit while I was stretching just like about, you know, not gym stuff. And she's like, she seems very like, okay, now th- this is where my brain goes into who the fuck knows what's happening. Cause she could be just being nice or she might be into me because the way the conversations are kind of going, it's freaking, I'm getting confused mm-hmm. because like, she's coming up to me, just sitting down with me to talk. And it's like, okay, you know, like today, for instance, I'm sitting there stretching. She comes up after she finishes with that older lady. She's like, Oh, you know what's going on? I was like, Oh, you know, just another day or whatever I said. And, She's like, are you almost done? I said, I'm just stretching. Why? You want to help? She's like, oh, well, I got to go put this stuff in this computer and all that stuff. I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll you know, talk to you later. Maybe see you tomorrow. She was like, oh, I'll come back. So she went off and came back. And she sat down and just started stretching me. We started shooting the shit. And like I say, I've been talking to her for like the last couple of weeks. And I was like, man, things are like, seem like they're going good. Maybe I can try to hang out with this girl. You know, she's super cute, super nice, all that stuff. But then the conversation went to a point as it, it does i mean it's not like a weird point because we were talking about my other gym buddy and i was like oh yeah you know he's not here because you know kid birth wife he's like she's like oh dang You're like how old is that guy and i was like oh he's 28 and she's like wow he's young i was like well i was like aren't you younger than him and i was like aren't you like 24 or something she's like you think i'm 24 and i was like oh i said something wrong that was my first thought and i was like well I just, whatever, I took the conversation at one point and I was like, oh, by the way, well, how old are you? You know, thinking, you know, the reason I said, I was like, she's got to be around 24 or 25 or something by the way she looks, the way she talks, all that stuff. I'm just taking a guess. Turns out she's fucking 19. And I was like, well, God damn it. Like, what the fuck? And I was like, well, now I feel like a goddamn creeper because of... Well, you know the other one that did this similarly. And it's like, I don't even know if I... I feel like a fucking... I feel like a creep just by talking to this person now. And Uh, also, I'm let down. Well, yeah, because, you know, society. Um, And then also... It's like, I fucking super bummed out about that. I was like, okay, I had hopes about this. I was like, I'm talking to somebody. This is going well, blah, 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 blah. And then this fucking bombshell drops. I'm like, great. Do I want to look like some goddamn fucking creeper and keep talking to this person? Or I can just be like, I don't want to fucking talk to you anymore because I don't feel like, you know, getting labeled. And I just don't know what to do with the situation. I think you should... Well... How do you feel? Uh, I've talked to other people. I don't want to give out names, but they said, fucking run. Don't talk to her anymore. Okay. Because she's 19. And I was like, well, Jesus Christ. I was like, I got over a decade on this girl. A decade and a half. Yeah. And especially with how much I've ridiculed the other one about, you know, a similar situation. It's like, then I feel like if I did try to pursue anything, not only does it look creepy, but I'm contradicting myself. Or, uh, wait, what's the word? Uh, being a hypocrite. That's the one. Mm, I can see that. I also just say... Man, I was going to have an existential quite, or point to say. Um, and that existential point being, like... Um, who fucking cares? <laughs> Nothing matters in the end anyway. Like, no one will remember this in like a million years. I mean, I get um, that. <laughs> I've had so, that thought too, but then it's also battling out the other shit, like the, well, the stuff I just explained. I just mm-hmm. my... But yeah, at the same time, I that's just one thought, because again, I just have many thoughts. One thought is just like, well then, like you could sit with that feeling, how you feel related to that, but then you can also just walk away and like, no harm, no foul, you know? And I know that you have feelings about like, oh damn, what this means and all oh, these things, whatever. I'm not saying your feelings or whatever. I'm just saying like, related to it, is that it just 
you know, whatever, you know, ultimately, like, you, this was in a college setting, right? What, the meeting this person? Yeah. No, this is at the gym. Oh, gym, sorry. If this is at the gym and everything like that, that means you also have, like, no way to, like, have a range of how old people are by chance, you know? So you could only, um, you could only freaking, you can only judge how, like, you could only, like, do your best judgment. It's just like, okay, this person is younger than what I am comfortable with, so I'm just going to stop talking to this per this person. The end, you know? Yeah, and... Yeah, the whole judgment of age that uh, I've complained about this for a while now. It's like it, with today's like uh, not cosmetics, but like skincare stuff and how people are like more healthy nowadays. Like I, I even said this to her. There's like one thing about it. She's like, you think I'm 24? I was like, look, with today's day and age, you could be 14 or 47. I have no fucking idea. You guys all look the That's same. That's what I'm trying to say. You could use that mentality to like check the facts of the situation not just lean into one thought as like oh this is creepy this is bad or allow others to say how you should feel about the situation you could just be like it just is yeah. and you'll be okay like but i don't want to be called a creep that's what i'm trying to say you are at this place just don't interact anymore and then that you know that reduces the likelihood of that ever happening so you just are fine. Just don't talk to her. Like if that's what would does that feel more comfortable for you? I like, mean, then you. I feel like any communication with this person is going to have people labeling me as a creeper. Okay, if you think that, though, I want to say real quick, people don't really think about other folks too darn much. I'm as much as people think. Um, is that then just stop? And then there you go. You're done. Okay. S sounds simple. Yeah, I know, right? But. <laughs> there's ah, always a but. There's a but. There's always a but. That also, the next thought that happened after that, after I was leaving the gym, I got super bummed out because, again, my brain goes... And I explained this, uh, I actually explained this to Aggie. I explained, I was like, it, with me, it is so mentally exhausting. I mean, it, it physically affects me going up to people, especially women, women and tr starting a conversation with them, just working up the courage to even start a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. And then when it goes and then you get, fucking you know this kind of shit happens whether you get rejected or something happens where it's just like it ends up going like no that can't happen going from all this energy being put into something to not only you know you know i feel like it's like a i imagine it's like you know taking coke or something you're, you're gonna fucking go on this extreme like urgh, on the edge like holy shit i gotta do this and then once the crash comes it's just it fucking takes me down way lower than i was at the beginning and then I have to ride that fucking, you know, recovery wave and it sucks. And it's like, great. There's one more person I can't talk to because of X, Y, and Z. And then my brain goes, oh, because now you're in your thirties and guess what? Now you're getting too old to even to talk to certain people. So that's freaking pushing you out of the market even further. So the only people that are within your age range to talk to and not look like a freaking weirdo are all freaking married with kids. So it, uh, and it, like I said, this just fucking loops back in on itself constantly. It's like, do you not like, so what are you going to entertain you said but and the thing about buts mm -hmm. is that like it when you say a but sometimes you're trying to eliminate the first part of the sentence you can say and and uh, so you can include the whole thing but i'd encourage you that despite the but of it all because it sounds like those are feelings that you can work on those feelings and maybe you'll even have a clear conscious of working on those feelings while not also having to manage the feeling of you feeling others are thinking you're 
a creeper. So stop and then go work on those feelings. And you can use the energy that you would have to always people thinking you're a creeper to now go healing yourself. Here's a thought. <laughs> I'm about to say, I'm like, that's a good use of response <sighs> skill. You did it, man. I can, I can see. That's how quick my work is. Mazel top, everyone. Yeah, not everybody's as fucking logical as I am. Um, now, just going back to the whole creep thing. I mean, I think the reason my brain is scared away from that besides, you know, Actually, I don't know if that works. I mean, it kind of could, but whatever. Let's not. I'm not going to like acknowledge that one because it's kind of irrational. But it probably goes back to the thing where if I get called a creeper or people see me as such, then that just shuts more doors from me making connections with people. Because now I have more don't people do seeing. That behavior. What do you mean? Just don't do that behavior and hang out with that person then. Okay, so just so lose the possibility of a connection just to save the maybe another connection might come on. So yes. it's it's like don't pick up that dollar because you might or might not find two dollars later. There's no guarantee yeah. that more will come along, and, but you want to risk it. That's what I'm trying to say. Because if you get that, you have a higher risk of getting more value. And you need to stop investing your energy in dollar bills. And every time that you put another dollar or like you have space or you have that space in your pocket um, for for a, a single bill or whatever the case may be, like you can't put other bills in there because you only you only have you already have all of these dollar bills. Right. So right. you, you so the thing is a lot of times people would rather not be alone than have somebody or then hold and reserve the space for people that have genuine like um value to them. So you ha and uh, once again summarizes everything I was saying into a very simple message of are you leaning into just attachment or are you leaning into your authentic self and the attachment that will follow if you allow yourself to just be? I'm not saying you have to be alone. You can also continue to be flexible and test the waters with folks to see if it works. But as soon as you start getting signs that this actually is not as healthy as it may be, you can make decisions of maybe I should just drop this now before making it bigger than it is. So then I feel less obligated or then, then I feel more obligated to stay and making this more complex. You have the right now to choose when to stay and when to go. This goes into the serenity prayer. If it doesn't matter if you're of Christian or religion or organized religion faith, whatever is something that's bigger than self Grant me the serenity to accept things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can myself, the wisdom to know the difference. The end. And that's where I'm going to end for tonight. No, wait, wait. I'm almost done. Okay, so... I heard what you said. If you're going to challenge it, I'm telling you the boundary that I don't want to hear. It it's not. Time. It's not so much a challenge as it is. How how do I get past the thought, or how do I challenge the thought, where if basically okay, like I'm not saying this is going to go anywhere with this person, and I'm willing to cut it off, but it also brings up the fear of. Hey, like I said, there's not many cars on the lot. So 
do you want to pass up this one which might be you know a beater of a car it's transportation but it probably won't go well but you end up risking not having a car period ever for a second you don't know if ever literally every time you're like no people will be coming around and then all of a sudden there was your ex and the ex before that and then the one that ugh, i didn't like and then the one that came around like it's go it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when you just need to see or hold that space of when but that's also where your attachment trauma is because it doesn't allow itself to trust in the when because it has so much unpredictability of it ever happen again that it tries to teach you that there's a possibility possibility it never will and in i need to just tell you that there's a high chance it probably it will probably will so. okay and i understand challenging that it, i just have to figure out how to have that thought process battle because like i said the, the big one now that's battling me with this one is that i'm getting older and the yeah. options are drying up so now it's becoming a panic at the disco yeah like i said I'm, I'm i'm going to freaking suit plantation and they're closing in freaking 30 minutes and they're not, See, I'm not they're also, not stocking the bar anymore <laughs> so that's also what i'm trying the, this is the last thing i'm also gonna say for tonight because oh, this fine. is a lot and i also suggest therapy and I'm but uh, and i what I suggest is you still are caught to the belief that it's all a timeline, especially when science and technology is extending people's life periods Ugh. and the quality of like skin and or, you know, people and whatever on the physical end of it all. Because again, your and my sexual orientations are different. So your sexuality is interesting to me, but nonetheless um, is different. And in that qualities, like you're, you know, like the, the way that you are attracted to people is different than how I am. And in yours, the use of people is a determined piece. I'm saying as people are getting older, they're maturing to where they're getting to this place of understanding everything I'm saying. So the qual, even though looks may be dipping, quality is increasing. So. Uh I'm just going to say mine's not based off of uh, looks. It's based off oh, of... Oh, fantastic. Then you're good. Uh, not, okay, looks are still involved, obviously, to some uh, oh. extent. But that's not my main concern here. It's the people are getting married, which obviously, like, they're not available. And then they're having kids, which I don't want to and fucking deal with. Divorced, but they're also divorcing and their kids are moving out of their house. Some folks had kids when they were 20, 21 years old. But I still don't want to deal with it. I don't well, want to be around somebody that, who's got kids. That is your preference, and there are consequences to preferences. I'm yep. sorry. So with that being said, I'm going to end there tonight. Okie dokie. And as Eggie just jumps in and says, boo. Boo, Eggie. We're, 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 you got here too late, so we're leaving. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Eggie. Hi, Eggie. Yeah, she, she's got some piss poor timing. I miss you. <laughs> she just got back yesterday, so her uh, sleep clock is still kind of wonky. Eggy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you guys can jump on okay, Discord. Bye, okay, bye, Eggy. <laughs> All right, yeah, you guys can jump on Discord and chat. Um, but we're going to end the stream there. Thank you, chat, for hanging out. Uh, hello, Mistress Therapist. Blah, blah, bye. Um, thanks for hanging out. Uh, unfortunately, chat didn't really partake this week. Uh, that's fine. It happens. We'll do this again next week, 6.30 p.m. Pacific time, more therapy Thursday. Bring your mental health questions and uh, go ahead and join the Discord if you're interested. Um, there's a link in the description below the stream. And if you're watching this on YouTube in the future, you're going to have to watch the live stream to, or at least go to my Twitch page to find the Discord link because I'm, I'm going to force you guys to go over there. So deal with it. 
Uh, so just keep an eye over there. I'll uh, start up a server probably sometime this weekend. So if you want to post any questions there, we can just jump on it first thing on the next stream. All that good stuff. Thank you, Asteria, for hanging out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll do this again next week. Be good. Drink water, not just coffee. You know who you are. Okay, bye. Okay, goodbye, everybody. Take it as a bye.